But customers always ask a question about which applications they can virtualize and which ones they shouldn't. And it's interesting because there was once a day where you could uh, only virtualize a certain set of applications. And it's been our goal to make sure that every application can be virtualized on ESX and on the VM, VMware v3 infrastructure. So today, you pretty much can virtualize any application. And so we've been doing a tremendous amount of work on uh, all ranges of applications, from those from being CPU intensive all the way to those through with high-end applications as well. So if you look at the bigger applications, like the mission critical enterprise applications, like um, say databases, those are often considered like the ones that are really difficult to virtualize. And now with the capabilities we've got in the hypervisor, we can now virtualize even those larger applications. And that's through, to, through a few things here. We've seen tremendous advantages uh, brought about by the CPU architecture for virtualization. Um, so we've gone from um, binary translation now to um, hardware assist and are now on the second generation hardware assist which um, helps with the memory management piece of it as well and that combined with a tremendous amount of software work to make sure we have large pages and all the other things behind it uh, to make that work well has meant that we can even virtualize these really big applications and get very low CPU overhead on these so for the databases now we're down to um, sort of under 10% CPU overhead for even the big extreme database situations now on the databases, they have tremendous amounts of I.O. as well, and so we've done a huge amount of work on the uh, I.O. stack. We've now got an enterprise-grade I.O. stack in, in ESX, in the, in the kernel of our bare metal hypervisor for the enterprises. And so that stack can now put through a tremendous amount of I.O. through its stack, has a lot of the ability to run a lot of concurrent I.O.s very efficiently and use other cores to hand those off. And so to put it in perspective, um, we now have enough I.O. processing to be able to do um, 300,000 IOs per second, which is a massive number through the stack. But also, just we've gone to the extent of publishing like a table of like we can actually take now databases off some of the big risk machines. Like you might take it off of some of the older um, Sun large SMP machines, and you can put those databases now in a virtual machine. And so, one example is we we now have enough processing capacity in a um, eight-way virtual machine to run an Oracle database with about the same level of performance you would have seen on a 48 CPU UltraSpark 3 system from circa 2002. That, that is just a stunning performance improvement over time and a massive amount of um, capacity that's available in the virtual machine infrastructure. Yeah, so there's an interesting phenomenon going on with the hardware right now. And so if we look at the hardware uh, architectures, it's basically following Moore's law, um, but rather than adding transistors and, and CPUs getting faster, we're seeing that we're getting more and more uh, cores on the platform. And so um, if, you, if you go back to when we went to the first um, dual core chips and start to plot forward, what you're seeing is that uh, companies like Intel and AMD are putting more cores on the platform. And uh, we started off with two and went to four, then we went to six with uh, Intel Dunnington systems. Um, and so with multi-sockets in the platform, that means we have 24 cores in the platform today. If you plot this out, just like even a couple of years, you can see pretty easily we're going to end up with over 100 cores in the platform and over a terabyte of memory in the platform within just a couple of years. And so you might ask the question about, so what happens to my applications when I try and put them in an infrastructure? And um, having had a lot of experience of working with applications and scaling those, it turns out that um, the higher up in the stack you go, the harder it is to scale an application. Um, and so while a lot of been, work has been done in operating systems that take advantage of multi-core, um, most applications don't scale between, beyond four to eight ways. There's a few, like the big databases and things have been engineered to do that way, but most of the customer applications struggle beyond that point. Now we're saying we have 100 cores in the platform and the applications only scale to like eight, so what do I do? And so it's interesting because basically the hypervisor is, is actually come in to solve that problem. And the hypervisor can be engineered well to scale to hundreds of cores, and that's actually exactly what we've been focusing on.